12th running of Sebring in Sebring, Florida. I'm Dan Johnson. I'm talking with Chip Irwin, who has brought an airplane to the event here that no one has seen, Chip. Tell me what we're looking at here and what this business of personal sport aviation is all about. Well, Dan, w welcome to sunny, warm Florida. <laughs> it's we'll get that warm thing working <laughs> here pretty quick. It, it's personal sport aircraft. It's something I claimed it's putting the sport back into light sport because it's more affordable. The price of, uh, of aircraft goes up exponentially with the number of seats. And most people are flying alone. And so if you uh, only fly with one seat, you only fly with one person, you only need one seat, and uh, save $100,000. <laughs> so this oh. aircraft is, uh, you can fly it with a light sport license and no medical, and it's an amateur built uh, class. So you do have to build it with us in a, in a couple of weeks. And the pricing uh, with including that build program is about $35,000 for a finished aircraft. This one is uh, a fully equipped with uh, an EFIS and EMS and aut autopilot and transponder and a BRS. And this is uh, pushing about 50,000. Okay, then, loaded yeah, to the gills, loaded, it's yeah. only about 50. Yeah, well, similar and to that's equipped. complete, so, but without your labor, is that correct? I well, mean, you got to add your no, labor no, to a, that the, number. Well, you have to add your time. Well, your time, right? Or whatever Not, you count, but our labor is included in that price. Oh, okay, so okay. We help, we so you're going to do a builder assist center. I don't want to get lost in the yeah. building, but I want to talk about the price here first because it's one of your important things. Yeah. In order for someone to get that price, they have to contribute their building. Of course, they've got to do the 51% per the rules and all that. But yeah. you're going to be there assist, or not maybe you, but somebody is going to be there assisting them. You know, here, do this first, and then that'll work better for you, that right. kind of thing. Builder assist center, they're usually called. But the services that will be provided by those people is part of the price. That's correct. Okay, that's the a pretty good is, deal. It's very simple because it's modern technology uh, machinery and all done, designed on a CAD and built on the uh, CAM uh, turret punch presses so the holes all match. So it's a match hole exactly. system that people well, have become more, more so, familiar with. I've been building like the Sport Cruiser and airplanes like that, as you know, using the similar technology and similar machines, but not to the extent that this airplane's built where the final holes are actually matched. So it really goes together quickly. Okay, so you're gonna do the Builder Assist Center and then, and Merlin PSA, and this is the name you settled on now. And there's some things about the airplane that are unique. One of which is mostly, I would guess, the single seat. All metal, right? Yes. Uh, fully enclosed, um, but a single seater, which some people are going to say, you already alluded to this, I just want to repeat it. Some people are going to go, well, what, I, what if I want to take somebody else? Well, then go get another well, airplane and do that. Well, but you, you saved most flying is done solo. Exactly. Most people fly for an hour and fly solo. And for the extra $100,000 you saved, you can rent a two-seater for the few hours you want to take somebody flying. That's right. There's the fact of it. And so a lot of people say, well, left. you know, making a single-seater, making a two-seater, there's really not that much more material. And, well, there may be in the airframe side of it. But by the time you get done creating a thing that can carry two people safely and competently and so forth, and the engine that that well, requires the engine costs three and times the gear more. and everything else has to be substantial. The engine costs three times more. Right. So right there, you're going to add quite a bit yeah. to it. So what engine do you have in this Merlin here, This Chip? one is the, the Rotax 582. They've made 30,000 of those. It's been around a long time. That's a 65 horsepower yeah. engine. Yeah, the power to weight ratio. On this little airplane, this is a, it going to go straight up or what? The power to weight ratio is 50% more than on, on the LSA class, <laughs> wow. on the two-seater. So it sets you back in the seat. What I'm saying, when I put talking about putting the sport back into it, it really does. Because... It, you sit back in the seat, you rotate, and you're still accelerating. And because it's single seat, you're always right on the roll and longitudinal axis. So you can fly in turbulence, and you don't even feel it so much. Okay. And the wing loading is higher. So you go over 100 miles an hour. So well, it's the same speed, but it has light controls, and it's the real fighter-style control stick in the center, uh, performance and light handling and acceleration. And, you know, it's really a real sport aircraft. 
All sounds great. We're going to go get inside the airplane. We want to look at your floats too, but um, is the airplane a brand new thing or it has it been around for a USA, while? It's but it's been, it's been around six years and it's certified in Czech Republic and Germany and it's fully tested and there's quite a few flying uh, so it's a it's a well proven. Air so it's frame. sort of a new to it's Americans. It's new to USA. But I've seen it over at the Aero Show. Yes. It looked different. It had a little tiny little engine in it. Uh, I, th I thought that was interesting. But with a 582, an engine that we know very well from Rotax, yeah. uh, as you say, tens of thousands of those operating very successfully. This is going to be a very exciting airplane. Whose prop are you using well, up here? The, it's the Duke uh, prop. It's, it has a, a really nice flex to it that gives you a, a good cruise performance and good climb combined with the fixed ground adjustable prop. And, and they've has, worked with the 582 for years yeah, in Europe, yeah. right? And this is has, a French company, correct? It's, yeah, it's set up for the uh, sea, the seaplane operation because it has the leading edge protection. Ah, okay, yeah, I see that yeah, on the yeah, leading edge of the exactly, prop here too. Exactly. So, Okay, well, down here on the uh, pointing at uh, not only the Rotex 582, which is what we've been talking about, but there's some other references down here. Well, there's a new engine coming out. It's been working on it for a few years. It was supposed to be here at the show. They didn't quite, a subcontractor let them down on polishing the cranks uh, but that's um it's a half a continental so it's an 0100 it's 60 huh. horsepower and it's off the shelf continental aircraft uh, parts so and it's four stroke so it, it runs slower it burns less fuel it still gives you the power and it sounds like a, a normal aircraft sound direct drive and a lot well, of people are going to want that. I mean, it may not be a Continental brand, but well, any, anybody that can fix a Continental yeah. can fix that, it's, I'm guessing. Yeah, Off-the-shelf Continental parts for any any mechanic that needs to work on that. And it's the same price. So it's no cost, the same price. Is that right? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay, well, let's move on down one more then. The electric power. Now, we know yeah. in the United States, most people know in the United States, still can't. Well, you can on an experimental. So you'll come back to that for me in a moment. But yes, on an LSA, you can't use electric yet because FAA is still trying to decide what they're going to do. But that doesn't really affect you today, no, does it? Not the slightest. Okay, so tell me, uh, we've done the thing with you on the electric motor before. We don't need all those details. I'll really okay. refer to that. But well, tell me about how that works in this airplane. Electric power works on low grade, slow aircraft. Or very or very efficient airframes. It doesn't really. Right, work we've seen it on sailplane type airplanes. Yeah, sailplanes, self-launching sailplanes, gliders, uh, ultralights that that are uh, slow enough, like the Zigolo okay. at 30 miles an hour. Basically, bring her up. And so, but it's difficult with the battery technology in like the state it is to uh, fly with bigger aircraft. And this aircraft has such a low okay. grade coefficient that it actually stay up for an hour to an hour and a half with our our um, battery electric system. Is that right? And wow. That's just been bench tested now. It's finally running. I have a running model here at the show and we'll, we'll be flying. The, the engine mount and the cowl are finished and the panel is finished. I'm looking forward to flying this on electric. And so we'll see that later this year, yeah. perhaps? Well, later this month. Later this month. All yeah. right. All right. Excellent. Okay. Well, let's go have a look inside the airplane, Chip. Okay. All right, Chip. Uh, now inside the Merlin PSA, which is, by the way, roomier than it looks from the outside uh that's kind of surprises me this is this would accommodate a pretty good sized person of which fortunately well, i'm not too much yet everybody who sat tried to sit in so far as fit is that right and and uh, some big americans have tried that and it's bigger uh per person uh than uh, most of the other lsa's there's more look you could put your headset on and you still have a lot of room up there oh yeah i've got i've got several inches above my yeah. head here so that's that's pretty cool okay so looking over here at uh, to my left uh, i see uh, well what, what i would call maybe a control quadrant of some kind what all have i got over here well Chip? that's your throttle okay this and, is my throttle and, uh, the big double okay and, uh, below on the very bottom not there but below that is the choke for down starting here, okay down here's the choke then, and then right what's really what's pointing. really unique here is to keep the uh, keep the whole con aircraft and system simple and effective we have a, a handbrake there you can pull that back and if when you push your rudder rudders in left or right um, what you're doing is closing and opening the, uh, the brake valves, so you ah. have differential braking with one hand lever. So that gives you more leg room. Ah, is that right? Okay, do that cost. again for me because that was a new twist. So I pull the brake on first. No, it doesn't matter. Doesn't it matter. Doesn't matter. Okay. If your if your if your uh, rudder is centered, you have uh, equal braking on both. But if you push one rudder pedal in, okay, I'm pushing the right is, in just to follow. Okay, you. then what you're doing there is closing one br brake valve and opening up the other one. So you have differential braking. So that's not so important with a steerable nose wheel. 
but this plane has a tail dragger option that you can have now. Ah, okay. okay. And it has amphibious floats, which you can have now, and both those have castering wheels, which means you need the differential braking to steer. But so you, I like the idea anyway. That's just clever. Yeah. There's not You just kind of do what sort of comes naturally with your feet on a rudder pedal. Right, right. And you're going to get the right result. Exactly. Very neat. I like that a lot. Okay, so those are the controls down here. Now, we've got some uh, other instrumentation up here. Just give me a brief review, a review of how you could configure the panel. This is the one with some extra stuff on it, right, as you right. said earlier. But go ahead and review what we've got up well, here for us, Chip. You could keep it simple and just put an analog airspeed and a couple fuel gauges and a tachometer and, and temperature gauge in and you'd be done. But, Which uh, is probably how the $35,000 yeah, exactly. one would come. Uh, okay. Yeah. So all you need, but if you want a little fancier stuff... Right. Go on. So what you have is electric trim, which is included. Okay, over here. And you have a little trim uh, actuator down okay, by the throttle. Okay, the trim actuator is down right by the throttle is yeah, where that was. Yeah, just put your thumb, thumb right. on it. Very easy to reach. Right. Yep. Then you've got the, um, well, we can turn it on. You've got the uh, EFIS and okay. the EMS combined. Using the MGL. This is their little yeah. small unit, which right. is all you need yeah, there, that's too. Yeah, pretty, pretty simple, and that's a real nice system. And you can put any, and that has a GPS built in too, so you can scroll through. You can have a, a moving map on well, that as well. All you really need in there, that's great. Yeah. And backed then, up with the era here. Well, and backed up with your telephone as well. And your telephone. Here's your telephone well. holder up here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And, and then you've got uh, a normal uh, transceiver, and then a Modus transponder with the ADBS uh, out uh, port. And then the new True Track Autopilot, which is very light and inexpensive and uh, runs this is on the RC new Eco? circles. Yeah, that's the new Eco. That's oh, really nice. Oh, great. Okay, first one of those I've actually seen installed. Yeah, there you uh, go. They're, they're exciting. And then you've got a, a handheld GPS with a, a auto database, so you can just pop that out and put it in your car. And then the fuel gauge up front and center, so you can turn it left, right, or both. Nice and then, where you can see it, too. I like yeah. that. Sometimes they're kind of hidden, yeah, and that's, that's a good way to have it. You don't want to put things um, difficult to find or forget about. And uh, for all of us that are obsessed supply. with our devices, yeah. you've got a way to plug those things in. Right, and that's, the, and that's hot all the time, so you don't have to have your master on to keep right, char great be charging your phone. The battery here weighs one pound and uh, to start the engine. It's a lithium battery as well. Is that right? One pound? Well. Wow. Yeah. Wow, and that's no weight starting, penalty at all. Yeah, it's, it's, one, it's, tw it's double the, the power starting power of most batteries at 25% of the weight. Wow. So tell me a little bit about what the weight of, 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 of you know, I don't know well, if you've you done this particular one. look at this here. That's the gear up and down. Right, and so we don't have retractable <laughs> gear on this airplane, but we have, well, the well, potential for retractable gear. You'll have to, see. right now if I press this, you can't see it in the camera, but the floats over there, the gear is going down. <laughs> and that's a Bluetooth, and you can operate that from your telephone app too. So you don't have to have a whole mechanism that you There's attach no to the airplane. There's no wires. And no wires. Yeah. Uh, and yet you can control the uh, retractable yeah. gear on your amphibious floats that will work on this airplane if somebody chooses it. Yeah. How much would those add? If I said, okay, I want, I want the deluxe model, I want everything you've got with this engine, and I want amphibious floats. Well, that's another, uh, it's about 10,000 more, so it's a, a, still a total low. with a fully loaded aircraft, amphibious, about 60,000. Wow. There's very little under 200000 that compares to that. <laughs> yeah, I, w I would guess so. Now, folks, we always say prices change. We'll give you a web address later. You'll want to find out what it is when you may view this video. But today here in uh, early 2016, we're doing this. Uh, $60,000 would get you all the bells and whistles and amphibious floats, yeah, which is a float remarkable plane. and all the power you need to make that all work, yeah, even it's with complete. the 582 that you got in here now. Well, 582 will give you a huge uh, uh, performance on the floats. So what is the weight of this without the floats now? Let's, let's yeah. not consider the floats. Tell me some numbers about weights and so forth of this airplane. Well, it's about 300 pounds, and it, and it carries... Empty weight, okay. Yeah, empty weight. Okay. Um, uh, excuse me, it's closer to 400. I'm, I'm getting the... I'm, it's 190 kilos. 190 <laughs> kilos, okay. Yeah. We'll, uh, we can do the math on that, but right. yeah, that'd be about right. 400 pounds. So it's about 400 pounds, and, and the payload, uh, depending on whether you have the BRS installed or not, is, is another 300-some... Uh, so in rough figures, so, so basically, even with the parachute most, in, you're still anybody, good for 250 or more body weight. Just about anybody who can fit in this, which is just about anybody, can fly it. And, and you got a little cargo room in the back. How much well, can yeah, you put you back can, there? It, it, you can for, carry on for the same, basically bag or the same as a, an airline. You can carry. You have your roll on, and you can put it in there, so you can have enough with you for a week. 
and 13 gallons of fuel. Okay, and 13 gallons of fuel, somewhere. and that will get you what kind of range with the 582? Well, it depends on if the, you're using the two-stroke or the four-stroke. Right, well, so let's anyway. go with the four, uh, two-stroke yeah. you got in here now. Yeah. So, so 13 gallons. Yeah, so uh, three hours. About three hours of flying yeah. after yeah. takeoff and right, climb right. to altitude and whatnot. Yeah, four hours with the four-stroke or even five, but... Uh, Three hours is what uh, most cost. Three country. hours, I got to get yeah, out of the airplane right. anyway. Most of us do, I think. So that's yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a remarkable package at a remarkable price. I think we got to go look at those floats now too, because okay. people are going to want to see that yeah. and yeah, yeah, why you have it. a gear button in a fixed gear airplane, because it may not be a fixed gear airplane. Yeah, and how you can raise or lower your gear with your phone app. Let's go have a look at the floats. Casey, okay, all right. So uh, let's do a quick review of the floats. Again, all metal construction. You got a lot of history with floats. Give me some of the basics about this float system. Well, the, the basics is first off, I got to say, float flying is the best flying there is. And, and <laughs> if you're going to have a sport plane, you, you got to have floats. It, it's just really the best. Low and slow and over the water and up. But then these floats are a classic all aluminum. Uh, I've been building floats for, for years. It's um, a three compartment. Uh, water rudders that are re retractable as well. Uh, I see the three compartments yeah, here. Right, three separate and normal yep, pump outs. Okay. The pump's already in the aircraft. You might might notice that in case you're wondering why there's a pump in the airplane. Ah, uh, okay. All and right. And the gear is electric hydraulic and it's a wireless, operates on Bluetooth. So that little. Uh, that was what the, the button the in the cockpit up, was. The key fob in this. the airplane right now, if you press that up and down and the airplane's 20 feet away, uh, these floats are, are going, up, going up and down. These float cool. wheels are going down. Plus, if you have an. What's, what's really cool, kind of useless, but still. <laughs> Just um, fun in the modern is, age, though. Is because it, yeah, a, there's a phone app for that. There's a phone app for everything, <laughs> right? So if I press this, uh, let's see, the down, the wheels are going down. And if I press up, All right. the wheels go up. And it's an auto, auto stop as well. And, and weight of the floats? Fl only 50 pounds each. 50 pounds, yeah. and this is amphibious floats, right. we got to remind people. Right. That is a very and low number for this, and I gather from your model number here that this is the capacity it can float. Yeah, so it's a little uh, more flotation than uh, Yeah, float what's the gross than, weight of the Merlin? We didn't yeah, get so that number from The gross it. weight is, uh, is about 750 pounds. 750 pounds, so right. you're, you're more than enough flotation. Right. you got all the power you need. you got the cool way to put the floats up and down. Yeah, uh, and the nice and, thing about floats is because they, they support their own weight in the air, you don't lose payload. So the payload stays the same even and even though you're adding the floats. Plus, you're, of course, you're taking off the gear itself. All right, Chip. Well, a lot of information about the Merlin PSA, the new airplane we're seeing here at Sebring, the new floats that go with it. Uh, although the technologies and the actual airframe and the float construction are, are well proven systems that you've been doing yourself for years. Tell us how we find out more information from you on the web and we'll put it up on the screen for everybody. Aeromarine-lsa.com. Okay, great. We'll have that up on the screen for everybody. Uh, you'll want to get more information about this because this is a bubbling, happening product right now that I think more people are going to engage in once they realize just what this offers. So thanks for talking with Chip Irwin and myself here at Sebring 2016. You can get more information about all kinds of affordable aircraft on bydanjohnson.com. We hope you'll come and visit.